So it was over on our video for how often should I poop when we were talking about stool frequency that I promised to also do a video where I would dig into a little more about bowel transit time because they're not always going to be the same thing. And just keep in mind that I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving anybody medical advice here. I'm just a schmuck comedian turned nutrition author because a long time ago when I lost my voice for eight years, 23 different doctors couldn't help me find my answer. So I had to dig for my own answers and now I teach what I learned in my books and courses here. So this will just be an educational video and I'll put some links in the description below this video to some studies that we'll dig into a little bit while we're going over this topic. But when we're looking at bowel transit time, that just means how long does it take for I put this in my mouth and ate it and it comes out the other end. That's what we're looking at when we're looking at bowel transit time. So we wanna know well, what's considered normal. And when you look in the medical information, they're gonna tell you that normal is 12 to 72 hours. And just keep in mind that the medical world's viewpoint is that it's normal to be constipated. Oh yeah, lots of people only poop once a week, no big deal. So we don't wanna look at what's normal. We're here to talk about what could be optimal. So when we're looking at how to check this, now there's tests that a doctor can run. We can put these things in here that we can kind of look at through x-rays at different times to see how things are traveling through the digestive tract. But there's also ways that you can just kind of get an idea of what's going on at home. So there's a few different ways you can do this. You can either eat some beets or you can take four activated charcoal capsules with a meal. Or some people will say, to take like two tablespoons of sesame seeds and put them in some water and then just drink them down real quick without chewing them up or anything. You want them to stay intact so they can go through the digestive tract and you can see them when they come out the other end. But in any of these situations, you gotta watch your stool. You wanna see what's coming out the other end. So you gotta become what we call a stool gazer. All the cool kids are stool gazers. So we wanna check to see how long does it take for whatever we're going to use to move through there. And activated charcoal is something you can get at most health food stores or on Amazon or something. But you're just looking for what comes through the stool, whether it's red in that stool from the beets or a black color from the activated charcoal, or you're looking for sesame seeds to come through in that stool. And you know, the sesame seeds is kind of a good one because then you can kind of also check, okay, how long does it take before I start to see these sesame seeds? But then also, do I see sesame seeds for three or four days? Indicating that things are really not moving through altogether and that some things are kind of lagging behind. So that might be able to give you some more insights there. Again, none of these things are diagnostic. This is just to give you some insights of what's going on. And another thing to know is like, do we really need to check? Like if somebody's pooping once a week, do they really need to know what their bowel transit time? No, it's slow, it's real slow. It's slower than you want it to be and there's likely malfunctions going on that are creating that issue. So this can just be a thing like, I have some clients do sometimes just to kind of get some indications of what's going on because I have seen people where they'll be having chronic diarrhea issues three, four, maybe even five times a day and they'll do this type of test, but then they realize that it takes longer for things to move through because of some other malfunctions that we'll cover here in just a second. So what I view as optimal is really between like 18 and maybe 36 hours. And I say 36 hours because let's think about this. If we did this test at like 6 p.m., you know, we took some sesame seeds or activated charcoal or something like that. And if you're an individual, that has one bowel movement per day in the morning. Well, if you're not dealing with digestive symptoms, we'll go over some of these in a second, but if you're not dealing with digestive symptoms, then I view that as okay. I view one bowel movement per day okay if a person is not dealing with digestive symptoms. So if you took these sesame seeds at like six o'clock and the next morning at 8 a.m. you had a bowel movement, well, they might not come out yet. It might not have made it through there, so it wouldn't make it until the next day. So that would be more like 36 hours. So we wanna look at other things beyond just the timing. I don't want your goal with your digestive system to win the timing race. That's not really what we wanna do. We wanna look at other factors about the digestion to understand what's really going to be the optimal speed for things to move through the system. So 
We want to look at things like, you know, the hydration and what kind of electrolytes a person is, has in their system. If, if they don't have a lot of electrolytes, which is really common when there's digestive malfunctions because a person can't break their food down and get the minerals out of that food. But if someone has low electrolytes, they might be drinking less water because they may feel bad if they drink a lot of water and wash out these minerals. So that could be a factor. But what we really want to look at is what are the other symptoms that a person might be dealing with that could give us some clues as to whether having this digestion move faster or slower could really benefit that person. So if a person's burping or bloating or has indigestion or constipation or maybe a hard stool or maybe infrequent stools, maybe they're only pooping every other day or every three or four days or even longer, or acid reflux or pain or discomfort type things, all of these are pretty common signs of a lack of stomach acid. So that's a sign that your stomach is not making enough acid to really acidify your food and break it down. And then in that case, it's going to move through the system a lot slower. It's going to take longer to break down by like rotting and fermenting and the body's going to take a longer time to get nutrients out of that food because it's not really acidified so that it can be broken down correctly. So in that scenario, things are going to move slower and if we just like took a laxative or something to speed things up, you're not really fixing the actual underlying cause and you're also not correcting all the trouble that can come from this low stomach acid. So low stomach acid is called hypochlorhydria. And so I put into AI hypochlorhydria and slow bowel transit time. And they say research suggests a strong connection between hypochlorhydria or low stomach acid and slow bowel transit time, which can lead to chronic constipation. While the relationship is not fully understood, it is thought to be driven by bacterial overgrowth and impaired digestion that occurs when stomach acid is too low. So not only when there's not enough stomach acid is, can you not really acidify the food and break it down, but that stomach acid is also the barrier that keeps all the bad guys out that come in on the food that we're eating. So these studies are showing, and I'll put links to the studies that this AI was referencing, they show that when there's not enough stomach acid, well, there's much more of a likelihood to create some type of bacterial overgrowth. And when this bacterial overgrowth comes into either the stomach or the small intestine, they put out these gases and these like waste products that can be very alkaline and then slow the whole process down even more. We found that in a lot of cases, this whole transit time has to do with the pH of that digestive tract. When things are leaning too far on the acidic side, they'll move through a lot faster. So when we're looking at situations like, is it moving too quickly or too slowly? Well, if food is moving through the digestive tract too quickly, that doesn't give you time to really assimilate the nutrients in the food that you're eating. It's all screaming through the system too fast. And if things are moving too slowly, well, now people are going to say, well, you're going to reabsorb all those toxins and that waste that your body was supposed to get rid of. And that's going to create a big burden for the body. So we really want things moving through in an appropriate pace. When we look at these symptoms like nausea or diarrhea or a soft or loose stool, or maybe you're going too often, maybe three or four or five times a day, that's usually considered a little bit too often. Or maybe there's a light colored stool, or you're having skin or acne type issues, or a greasy type stool. All of these we view as signs of a lack of bile flow, where bile has become too thick and sticky to flow out of the gallbladder correctly. So we need both of these sides of digestion working correctly to really be able to digest our food. But if we're making stomach acid and acidifying that food, but then this bile is not being triggered to come down to help neutralize those acids, and that process is not triggering the pancreas to squirt out this bicarb that helps us neutralize those acids, then the acids can move through there and then everything's gonna move through at a much faster pace so that the body's like, hey, I don't wanna digest a hole in my intestinal lining. I'm gonna get all this stuff out of here. So there's other causes of chronic diarrhea or loose stools or things moving too fast, but this is a very common one that we see a lot. So we wanna look at these other factors. You know, is stomach acid working correctly? Is bile flowing correctly? And we also wanna know about where the body is sending water. A lot of people are going to tell you that when you have this slow bowel transit time, that means the body's gonna absorb more of these toxins like we talked about, but also reabsorb a lot of the water. And now this stool is gonna become dry and hard and lead to constipation. And we view it the other way. 
There's imbalances in the body. There's an imbalance called an anabolic imbalance that we talk about a lot that can cause the body to send too much water through the kidneys and not enough to the bowels. And now those bowels are gonna be hard and dry and they're gonna move much slower. A person will often be constipated in that scenario. So now where the body is sending water is affecting this transit time. It's not necessarily the transit time that's always affecting if that stool is gonna to be too dry or not. So when we're looking at things like this, we need to understand you know, a bacterial overgrowth can really create variations in this time. The diet that a person is eating could really change the variation. Um, you know, people are always going to say, oh, if it's moving too slow, just increase your fiber. And if somebody's really constipated and not making enough stomach acid, fiber is not going to really fix that. But if a person is doing like a carnivore diet where they're not bringing in any fiber, then that can really slow the rate at which some things will move through. So we really want to look at all of the factors when we're looking at what's my score. You know, I don't want to just get a high score. I want to get an idea. Should I be trying to speed this up? or should I be trying to slow it down? So if you're new to this channel, you don't understand how to do those things, we'll put a link in the description below for our totally free digestion course. And that just walks you through figuring out which aspects of digestion are not working correctly and steps you can take to improve that. And it also shows you how to do some simple tests at home to see if you might be dealing with what we were talking about, that anabolic imbalance, and see if maybe the body is sending too much water to the kidneys and not enough to the bowels. And you can also see people with chronic diarrhea because they're leaning too far on the other side, the catabolic side of that natural circadian rhythm. And now the body's sending too much water to the bowels and not enough to the kidneys. So a person's transit time could actually be slow but they could be having chronic diarrhea issues either because the body is sending too much water to the bowels or maybe there's some type of bad bacterial overgrowth in the large intestine that's creating like an urgent situation there where the body's trying to get some stuff out of there. So there's a variety of things that can really affect this. We don't want to just look at this number and that, that doesn't really tell us are we healthy and is our digestion working well or not. We have to look at other factors to really get a grip on what does that transit time telling us. So a lot of natural health experts are going to tell you that 12 to 24 hours is an optimal transit time. I really personally view it more like that 18 to 36 hours is really going to be better. But if there's major symptoms over here, I view that as a more important information than the bowel transit time. If somebody's having major bloating and they look pregnant after they eat, even though they're a dude, then I view that as a more important piece of information than the stopwatch telling me what time has poop come out. So I want to look at some of these other factors and then I just use this as a piece of information, kind of like I talked about in that stool frequency video. And I'll put a link to that if you want to check that out in the description below as well. But if you already understand some of these symptoms that you're dealing with and you already understand that either my stool is moving way too fast or way too slow, you can jump over right now and check out our video on how to slow down digestion or how to speed up digestion to get more insights on what might be appropriate for you. I can't wait to hear about your results.